Two very different ghost stories hit theaters this weekend, and I've got my review of both right now. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Merle, and welcome to my review of Disney's Haunted Mansion and Talk To Me, the latest film from A24. Both of them are hitting theaters and trying to survive against the second week of Barbenheimer, and we'll see how both of them do on next week's Charts with Dan. But let's first look at Disney's Haunted Mansion, which is of course based on the classic ride at the Disney theme parks. It's from Bad Hair and Dear White People writer-director Justin Simeon, with a screenplay from Katie Dippold, a writer on Parks and Recreation, as well as the screenwriter behind The Heat, Snatched, and 2016's Ghostbusters. Haunted Mansion takes place at a, this is a shocker here, I know, Haunted Mansion, which is owned by Rosario Dawson, and it's a building who haunts anyone who dares to cross the threshold. A group of quasi-experts attempts to exercise the ghosts, including Lakeith Stanfield as a grieving physicist, Tiffany Haddish as a questionable medium, Owen Wilson as a quirky priest, and Danny DeVito as a professor with a love of ghosts. God, give us a break. We can we don't want to be haunted. It just seems like there's so many bad people in the world. Haunt them. How about an amen at the count of three? One, two, three. Amen. Amen. Are you sure he's a priest? The spirits are led by a cast, including Oscar winner Jamie Lee Curtis as the imprisoned medium Madame Leota, and Oscar winner Jared Leto as the hatbox ghost. And it's good to see that for all of Jared Leto's method actor craziness, that he's not above taking what I like to call a paycheck role every now and again. Because honestly, there is absolutely no reason to have a name actor in this role. It is a complete CGI role, and really the only acting requirement is theme park spooky. Speaking of theme parks, Haunted Mansion is being released, of course, by Disney, a company that paid their two CEOs a combined $38 million in fiscal year 2022. However, current CEO Bob Iger has said that the actors and writers on strike have unrealistic expectations in receiving more compensation. I've always loved The Haunted Mansion at Disney. It's one of my favorite rides, and this movie definitely captures the spirit, no pun intended, of that ride. If Pirates of the Caribbean, the movie, transcended the ride upon which it was based, this one successfully imitates it. And if you are a Disney fan, there are fun little Easter eggs packed into nearly every frame. A lot of that credit goes to the production design team for putting together some really fun and what looks like mostly practical sets for the movie. It's really, really well designed. Now, as movies go, this is about as corporate as it gets. A Disney movie based on a Disney theme park ride, the second version of an adaptation of The Haunted Mansion that we've gotten in theaters. And so the movie really succeeds on how much the cast buys in to the concept. And luckily for this movie, the cast really, really does. Lakeith Stanfield in particular he gives a performance that is so much richer than you might expect in a movie based on a theme park ride. I really thought he was legitimately very, very good in this film. Tiffany Haddish, Danny DeVito, and Owen Wilson also bring their comedic skills to the table, and they don't just appear to be coasting on charisma. While I didn't get a lot of belly laughs out of the movie, I certainly did smile and chuckle a lot, and they're a big reason why. Rosario Dawson is essentially playing the straight man to all the antics that are happening around her, and she plays that part well. And Chase Dillon, as her young son, also puts in a strong performance as a bullied kid who already found the world terrifying before the ghosts even showed up. You know, I think we get some daylight in here, it's gonna feel better. Hey, I'm gonna light a vanilla candle and it's gonna be a game changer. Will it though? Now, not being in LA anymore, I don't get as many advanced screenings, which means the word from a lot of critics is already out on this film. And if you go just by the Rotten Tomatoes score that's out there, it may make it seem like this movie is a total waste of time. And I actually would disagree with that. It's good family fun, the kind of movie that may become an annual tradition every Halloween streaming on Disney+. Plus. The first two acts are clever, but the third act does devolve into the generic big climax that so many adventure films fall into. If the success of Barbie and Oppenheimer last week proved anything, it's that audiences will turn up to the theater if you put a movie out there that is new and challenging and brings something unique to the table. And I can't quite say that Haunted Mansion does that. It is a really fun movie, 
but not something that you haven't seen a version of before. It doesn't stand out in the way, again, that Pirates of the Caribbean was able to do when it came out 20 years ago, in that it is based on the ride, but does something completely different or takes a unique twist on that. This is really just everything that's fun about the Disney ride in a movie. And when it comes to my recommendation, I would say that it rides the line between it's fine and it's good. And you know what? I'm actually going to tweak it just over that it's good line. But as so many movies have found out, being just fine or good enough really isn't good enough for lots of audiences this summer. I mean, there are movies like Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 that I thought were really good that audiences aren't turning up to. I think maybe the reasoning for putting it out in the summer was that they did want it on Disney Plus for the Halloween season, but I think this movie would actually have performed better, or at least... I could say it probably wouldn't have performed any worse than it seems to be on track to if Disney had put it in theaters on Halloween and let people stream it next year. But for whatever the reasoning is, I don't know if The Haunted Mansion is really going to catch on this summer, but I did enjoy it. And if you are looking for something new, if you've seen Barbie and Oppenheimer and everything else in theaters, then I think you could do a lot worse than Haunted Mansion. Next up is a movie that's actually kind of the darker side of the coin of Haunted Mansion. It has a lot of things in common. It's from A24 and it's called Talk to Me from director brothers Danny and Michael Philippou in their film directing debut with a script from Danny Philippou and writer Bill Hensman. And hey, look at this. These directors started out on YouTube where their channel, Raka Raka, has over 6 million subscribers. Talk to Me, as I mentioned, is also being released by A24, which is actually in production still on many of their films because they're not part of the AMPTP and the producers on those movies signed interim agreements with SAG-AFTRA that allowed the actors to keep working and the films to stay in production. So good for them. Sophie Wilde stars in the film as Mia, a daughter grieving the death of her mother just two years earlier. When a hand that allows you to speak to the dead begins circulating at parties, Mia sees it as a chance to potentially reconnect to her mother. But if the portal to the dead stays open too long, then the dead don't leave so easily, and what started as a party trick soon turns into a horrifying showdown as the lines between the real world and the spirit world begin to blur. And Talk To Me, I think, is a really, first of all, scary movie. And even though it has kind of an out there premise, it also seems somewhat realistic, if only because I 100% believe that if there were some kind of a mystical cursed hand that allows you to be possessed by the spirit of the dead and it got into the hands of a bunch of teenagers, they would 100% turn it into the latest TikTok trend like they do in this movie. I have seen so many dumb things on social media that if I saw the get possessed by a spirit challenge, I really would wouldn't blink twice. Talk To Me is packed with relative movie newcomers in front of and behind the camera, and foremost amongst them is Sophie Wilde playing Mia, and it's a really impressive performance. The horror genre, and A24 in particular, often generates really great lead performances from actresses because of the material, and Wilde gives Mia enough vulnerability to make her sympathetic, but enough desperation and recklessness to make you question her actions. In a movie that requires a conflict between characters based on the actions that some of them take, it helps helps that the screenplay actually makes the audience conflicted about those characters' actions because it just draws you deeper into the narrative. As this sort of becomes standard with what some people call elevated horror, the kind of horror movies that A24 puts out, this transcends in many ways scary or creepy and is often very disturbing. The idea of the corruption of innocence, for example, is something that's been spooking audiences since The Exorcist and even before that. This is not one of those movies that's like a crowd pleaser where it's here to, you know, throw you some jump scares and make you laugh and, you know, give you some creepy crawlies and stuff like that. This is a very psychological horror film while also having some of those other things, but it's also the horror film that I kind of prefer. It may not make you jump out of your seat while you're watching it, but you might be looking over your shoulder when the lights go out at night or trying to figure out what's that sound in the dark. That's the kind of horror that I like. A24 definitely has an aesthetic, and it's hard to know if the studio inspires filmmakers to make films like these, or if these disturbing and dark horror films are actively sought out by A24. But regardless, I think that Talk To Me is an effective clinic in slow burn horror and dread. If you've liked A24 horror movies in the past, then I think that you're going to like this one. It is in the vein of movies like Hereditary, although I enjoyed Hereditary more. That's not a slam on this movie, that's just how much I love Hereditary. And when we look at it on my personal scale, I'm going to say that Talk To Me lands squarely in the it's good category. And like I said, if you are a fan of this type of horror film, I don't think that you'll be disappointed. They like you. 
So in the battle of competing ghost stories opening this weekend, I'm giving the edge to talk to me, although Haunted Mansion is of course far more appropriate for families and people that aren't into hardcore horror films. But what do you think? Which of these are you going to be seeing this weekend? Are you going to see both? Are you going to see neither and go see Barbie again? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for spending part of your day here with me. Stay tuned right here on the channel. I'll have a full box office breakdown of all of these movies next week. I'm also working on an update video when it comes to the SAG After Strike, talking about who is still filming, why they're still filming, and if there has been any progress in getting these talks done, and so much more right here on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Bye.